Yes, it's uh, been a very busy day in Nigeria. The end bad governance protests uh, from the clips you just saw from across uh, the country. Those are visuals earlier sent by our correspondents across the country. This is nationwide and we are continuing from where Fisayo stopped and uh, we are going to be bringing you live updates and of course package reports earlier in the day. My name is Ogoch Kuka Onam. And Going straight to the Eagle Square now, where we are joining Ignatius Nkwo live to give us an update at this time. Hello, Ignatius. Uh, uh, what's happening there at this time? Well, uh, Gochukuka, well, uh, they will say uh, after the storm comes a calm. Here at the Eagle Square is very, very calm at this point in time. Well, when we came here in the morning, uh, like if you followed my narratives uh, from morning and afternoon and this time, uh, it got, in the morning, morning started like a, a normal day here in the Eagle Square, only with the presence of some, some security personnel. But towards afternoon, 12, 1 and thereabouts, you know, we begin to see influx of pockets of protesters, you know, though calm, uh, not really violent, uh, so to say. But at a point in time, they were really insisting on trying to come into the Eagle Square. But then the security personnel were able to ward them off from coming to the Eagle Square and all this is happening calmly. But then we, 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 within that period when they were stopped from entering the, into the, the, the Eagle Square proper, you know, we've discovered that the road that leads to the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs, Foreign Affairs, and some other ministries around the surrounding the Eagle Square. You know, some of them went there and then occupied some of those places. That's why uh, along the road I begin to see leaves, begin to see some leaves and some, uh, some of the materials they use uh, while they were still insisting on coming to the Eagle Square. But well, the security personnel actually we are insistent on making sure that they do not come into the Eagle Square. But what, what, what that is understandable because we know that the Eagle Square is seen as a seat of power. So all the people who feel that they were protesting that came into the federal capital territory, Abuja, they felt if they didn't touch the Eagle Square, they did not come close to government. But the security personnel were really uh, on hand. They did their work actually. They were really prepared for them. Now where I am standing now is directly the road that, that, that leads into the Eagle Square, you know, from the, from the Federal Minister of, of uh, Finance. Before this time, like in, the la in the last one hour, 30 minutes, there were a lot of crowds that were seated here. In fact, if you see them sitting, you will think uh, they've converted this place as their board for this afternoon. But as I'm talking to you, no single protester here at this moment. Only security personnel and some one or two journalists who are there here to take situation report, just like as I'm doing at the moment. So far, so good. The Eagle Square is calm. No single protester here. Okay, so you can confirm that the area is very clear, unlike in the morning. All right, uh, it seems uh, Ignatius couldn't hear me again. All right, uh, we now cross over to Abiokuta, the Ogun State Capital, where the situation could best be described as area cool and calm, as residents go about their normal uh, daily activities without any sign of protest. Doris Olumoko has a situation report. I am right now at one of the roads in Abel, which are talking about the front of the MKO Abeola Stadium. And as we speak, so far there is no protest going on in any part of the state capital talking about Abel, but we hear some um, updates from the security uh, operatives here. I have with me the commandant of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, who will give us a brief about what's going on in other parts of the state, apart from the state capital. Yeah, I you know the three senatorial districts in the states uh, West and the Abeokuta here, there are no protests anywhere. But the little protest we have currently is in Ijebudi, where about 20 to 23 people gather together with their banner for peaceful protests. You know, it is their right, we cannot say no. But we are there to protect both the protesters and the members of the public so that there will be peace around Ijebudi and Ogun State as a whole. It is important to note that late yesterday evening, a court order was received restricting protesters to certain locations. For Abekuta Metropolis, Masud Abiola Stadium is the designated point, and that's why you see massive deployment here. Uh, we have to respect citizens' rights. Our reservation is we don't want miscreants to hijack this protest. 
But good enough, most of the um, organizers they have seen reason on the in the untimely nature of conducting protests at this point in time in our country, and for that reason, most of them have voluntary back off from being part of the protest. Elsewhere in parts of Abeokuta, residents were going about their daily activities. Few civil servants resumed for work while others stayed away, just as some banks offer skeletal services in Abeokuta, Doris Olumoko, NTN. And from Doris Olumoko, we just uh, go straight to Lagos, uh, the commercial nerve center of the country, where Joel Popola is standing by for a live update. Hello, Joel. Tell us the situation right now. Thank you, Ogochukuka. The situation in Lagos is calm. Security arrangements can be best can best be described as top-notch. Security operatives began the, the deployment of security operatives began as early as three in the morning. The police and other sister security agencies began their deployment very early in the morning to strategic places in Lagos, areas that are considered as um, flashpoints and the designated areas for the protests in Lagos. Security there can best be described as top-notch. And the commissioner of police earlier did advise that those who converge around unauthorized places should move to the designated locations so that they can be adequately protected and the situation can be managed and also to prevent infiltration of fifth columnists into their rank. And so far, so, so far in Lagos, I can tell you that everything has been going on each free. In areas like Lekki, where some protesters did converge, which is one of the unauthorized places, the commissioner of police was there and he, he asked them to move to areas like the Ganifa Emi Freedom Park, the Peace Park at Ojota and other locations in, in Lagos Island and other locations in Lagos mainland so that the security arrangements can work for them and they can be well protected. Right now here in um, Ikeja on that bridge, we can see that um, initially there was a lull. Initially there was a lull in the morning, but now business activities has picked up to a large extent. People are going about their normal activities. Um, those who are going to the island, those who are going to areas like Yanopaja, they are boarding um, the bus, they are going about their normal activities. Nobody has been harassed, nobody has been intimidated, and it is looking like a carnival-like atmosphere around me here. It is looking like normalcy has been fully restored, in spite of the fact that the protest is ongoing. But right now, the protest is expected to stop at 6 p.m. The protest is expected to start at 8 a.m. and is expected to stop at 6 p.m. So the police has advised that those who are in these locations should leave those designated locations even around 6 p.m. when the window for the protest closes. So far, I can tell you that everything is under control in Lagos, the center of excellence. Thank you very much, uh, Joel Popola, for that wonderful update. We are glad it's been peaceful all the way there. Now, and uh, as the nationwide plant protest begins, uh, that is today, some youths and elders in Plateau State are calling for better welfare for all citizens in view of the current hardship being experienced in the country. This was during the peaceful protest in Jos by a group called Initiative for Better and Brighter Nigeria, convened by Isa El Buba, a clergyman. Bill Kisu Nuhu reports. The protesters who carried placards with various inscriptions were on the major streets in Jos Metropolis to register their concerns. We know they are trying, we know they are putting in effort, but we want more efforts. We want the first subsidy to be reversed to the old practice. Because not every citizen is the same. There are poor citizens and there are, there are weak citizens and there are strong citizens. And the essence of government is to see how do everybody survive. If you go to the market today, uh, it's not easy to come out with uh, what can help you to feed your family. The only solution here is for the government to bring back the full subsidy. And I guess everything will be back to normal. Convener of the protest, 
Prophet Isa El Buba urged the federal government to embark on measures that will reduce hardship and ensure significant improvement of the nation's economy. Institutions are in place. There will no more be hunger in the land. The killing will stop in the land. Our armed forces will enjoy their services to the people. Meanwhile, the state is generally peaceful as security personnel have been deployed to strategic positions to maintain law and order. Movement is, however, not restricted as people go about their normal activities. In Jos, Bilki Sunuhu, NTA News. And from Jos, we return to the studio now where we have a public affairs analyst, Dr. George Agbakahi. He is here to, he has been uh, observing the situation uh, right from uh, his home and now he's in the studio. He's been in the studio actually. So, uh, Doctor, you've been following trends, uh, you know. Uh, so, what's your view? Uh, do you think this is the right direction, uh, especially when we are having a couple of uh, destructions and uh, lootings in some parts of the uh, country? Thank you very much for having me. Well, like I said earlier on in the studio, I think. Um, Protest um, naturally is part and parcel of the democratic system, you know, but the protest needs to be utmostly peaceful. And when it's peaceful, you will see a kind of community policing, a relationship existing between the protesters and the um, security agencies. Um, so far in Lagos State, in River State, um, Oyo State, um, Ogo State, and predominantly in the Southeast, as well as part of the South-South, there has been utmost peace and tranquility, which is very significant. But on the other hand, what is happening currently in Niger State, in some part of Suleja, where the youths are burning houses and, you know, rampaging, you know, businesses, as well as in Kanu State, where you see the protest has now been divided into two groups, the original group, as well as the group that are, are like hoodlums, whose main objective is to cause chaos. Then you go to... Um, <clears throat> Um, you go to Yobe State, where you see protesters burning government parties, burning buses. That is not what protest is all about. That's why, you know, some of us earlier on, we are really talking about how are the organizers going to handle this protest. We all know that protest as a group is not monolithic in nature, because the, the group leaders at some point may not be able to control their followers. And that is what you see happening in some of these areas like Kanu. You know, these protesters, the arrangement with the security agencies is that they are being confined in a designated areas to protest, which is what is obtainable in advanced countries. But in some of these places like Kanu, you see youths walking around the street, you know, destroying properties. In Yobe State, the same thing is applicable. That is, that is very sad. That is very sad. And I believe, um, in my own view, I think, I think the, the organizers of these protests, you know, may have to do a rethink and, 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 and consider if they are going to, you know, I, I think call off these protests for the best interests of the country. Because it will get to a situation where they will now start causing mayhem, you know, you know, injuring people, lives and properties. Mm. All right, doctor, uh, 10 days is, uh, is, a, is a very long time. Uh, we'll come to that. Uh, but at this time, let's uh, cross over to Lokoja in Kogi State. Uh, Jonathan Omajali will be giving us an update uh, uh, of uh, the situation there now. Jonathan, can, can you hear me? 
Lokoja okay, so in Kogi State. Uh, Jonathan Omajale will be giving us an update. Uh, Okay, so Jonathan, you can go ahead. Uh, what's the situation okay, at this time? Um, at the moment, Kogi State, um, Lokoja in particular, looks like um, a state that is on public holiday. Um, this particular spot, uh, Ganaja Junction, uh, for instance, used to be a beehive of activity, but today it's a different story. That is because several people uh, decided to stay back at home. Um, aside that, the, the city is largely uh, very peaceful and um, uh, very calm. I, I went out earlier this morning and in the afternoon, of course, uh, and I've really not seen any group of protesters. Uh, thankfully, as well, the security personnel have been doing um, a very uh, major uh, job in ensuring that there is peace uh, in the town. Um, they've been patrolling and also stationed in strategic um, locations just to ensure that nothing goes wrong. I also got feelers from um, other parts of the state and from what I, I can gather, Kogi State uh, so far has been very peaceful. All right, uh, Jonathan, thank you very much. Uh, we may be coming back to you if uh, there is any need for that. But for now, thank you. Okay, we'll now come back to the studio. Uh, the doctor was talking about uh, the implications, uh, you know, of mayhem. The protest is actually supposed to be peaceful. So I don't know if uh, you have any idea of uh, the legal implications of, uh, you know, uh, some of these uh, youths who have uh, turned the peaceful protest into a violent one. And of course, uh, causing the... Uh, has the uh, arson and of course looting. Do you have any idea of any legal implication? Um, well, you know, um, I think I think section 24 of the constitution says that it is also the duty of the police, you know, to protect innocent individuals, you know, and be able to protect lives and properties of the citizenry. So I think it is pretty wrong for protesters to start engaging, you know, in things that are awful, you know, like burning of government properties, you know, as we've seen in, um, in Yobe State, you know, as we've seen in Kanu State, as we've seen in, um, in Suleja, in Niger State. That is very wrong. That is not what protest is all about. You know, a protest essentially is for the protesters to be able to, you know, share their grievances, you know, with the leadership of the country, with the government. And you can do it pretty peacefully, whereby the government will understand, you know, the issues at stake. And the protesters also made demands, which they've also given to government. But the idea of, you know, creating chaos, havoc, burning properties, you know, it now shows that the, the organizers of the protest cannot be able to control their followers. And that is not right. Uh, doctor, are you, are you sure some of those uh, uh, protesters are actually the, the real protesters? Because we saw children. I don't think the organizers would have uh, mobilized children to come and uh, engage in the protest. Yeah, but, but the point is this. If you are a leader of a protest, and you're calling people to come and protest, which Bonaventure, they are your followers. It is also your duty to be able to guide them what is happening in Kanu State currently is, is unheard of. You see, protest in Nigeria historically has been problematic. In 1965, during the Western Region protest, in the First Republic, it was problematic. All the way you come to 1978 during the Ali Mosgo protest, when the when students in the university then were pro protesting, you know, against, you know, raising of their, their school fees. It was also problematic. You go to 1989, you know, during the, I think, Babangida, you know, era, when 
Nigerians protested against the structural adjustment program that made life pretty difficult for the citizenry. It was problematic and a lot of people died. A lot of people were killed. Government properties were burnt. Then, not long ago, during the NSAS protest, which is pretty recent, you know, it was hijacked by hoodlums who caused havoc, chaos, and a lot of people died. You know, that, that is the point I am making. You know, in any protest, probably because of the nature of our political culture, political culture inherently is synonymous with violence. Check out our elections. Nigerian elections, right from 1979 to 1983, up to this moment, is mostly synonymous with violence. So whenever you hear of protest in Nigeria, we have to, as Nigerians, be very mindful on how we organize protest. Because in most cases, you know, it will, be, it will be taken over by hoodlums. And these hoodlums, what they, they, they eat by violence. They take over from innocent people that are protesting and now go and cause havoc, you know, go to businesses, you know, destroy things, loot things. That, that is pretty wrong. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. George Agbakahi, a public affairs analyst, for sharing your thoughts with us. And of course, uh, taking us uh, down memory lane, you talked about the 1965 protest and of course the 1989 and of course so many others. Thank you so much for your time. At this point, uh, we'll be joining Ali Kabiru at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport. Uh, let's uh, get a feel of what's happening there at this time. All right, uh, we we taking a break now. Since apologies, we may return to Aliyu Kabiru when the network is steady. At this point, we'll take a break. Thank you for staying tuned. We'll now be going over to the Olympics uh, and uh, uh, the news will continue on our NTA International and of course News 24 while the Olympics will be on, on our terrestrial transmissions. And at this time we go over to Kano. Amino Umar is standing by to give us an update, especially uh, go around and look at uh, what has uh, transpired in some places in the name of our uh, protest. As we earlier told you, uh, yes, the protest uh, do hold. Yes, uh, the pro uh, whether the protest is a protest, that one is another question. But what we are uh, made to understand was that the protest wasn't a protest. It was uh, uh, actually taken over by uh, hoodlums, uh, I may say, who uh, they, they used the opportunity to uh, start looting uh, some places. And police were able to recover some of the items that uh, were looted and um, during the course of uh, what the, some called uh, uh, protests, which uh, to some other people, uh, they give it another definition. Right here, uh, joining me is the spokesperson of the Kano Police Command, uh, Abdullahi Haruna Jawa. He's here to tell us more about what happened in the city and uh, what is the situation so far. So, um, PPRO, you are on. Uh, we would like you to uh, update the Nigerians. Mostly, they are so interested and keen on what is happening in Kano. So, uh, tell us what your report from your people telling us um, um, from all parts of Kano. Uh, you are welcome to the Bomb Point Police headquarters here in Kano. And of course, you have seen the situation here. Uh, before the protest, that, that is before today, the police command in Kano has engaged various stakeholders, officially those that intend to partake in this uh, so-called nationwide uh, protest. After the engagement with the police, taking into consideration the nature of the security situation in the state, all of them agreed 
not to partake in these uh, protests because the likelihood of the problems taking over the government. Today, uh, when the protest started, hoodlums now penetrated into these protests and started attacking supermarkets and also some uh, government facilities. As a result, the State Commissioner of Police, CP Saman Dogogarba, immediately mobilized operational teams to reinforce the already uh, existing uh, deployments in the new agronomies of the state. Uh, so far, uh, a lot of arrests have been made. You can see more than 118 suspects were arrested. You can see them many are even coming. And this is properties that are also recovered. In one of the buildings that happened, I will be the host of OG in China. They have looted an NCC office and also attacked some court complexes. And there we were able to, to recover an AK-47 rifle and exhibit that was kept at the premises. Currently, monitoring is going on by the police command in Kano, and of course, we are making progress. Okay, uh, so um, if we may ask now, uh, we would like to know what is uh, the general situation now? Uh, we said it, it, has, it has started in the morning and um, uh, it subsided. I don't know uh, what is happening from the reports that you are, uh, you, are, you are receiving from your people on the ground. The crowd also culminated towards the government house mm -hmm. because of their intention of going to the government house. Mm -hmm. And as a result, these food loans and back basak are attacking uh, supermarkets, mm -hmm. little properties. As of this time, mm -hmm. that is also, as of this communication with you, mm -hmm. we are monitoring the situation and just areas are calm now. Okay. Uh, so, um, from the police, is there any maybe issue of uh, collaboration between other uh, security agencies, maybe towards ensuring that uh, the uh, the security is reinforced and looking. Including other security agencies, and also we are still monitoring the situation and we are working together. There with the military. Okay. Uh, so uh, that has been the, the uh, police. Rightly, what he said, uh, they have the uh, synergy between other security agencies and they are trying to reinforce uh, the security in the city. They already have existing um, uh, men on ground. And prior to that, we uh, have received uh, calls from um, people uh, asking people to uh, uh, not to partake in this because of the likelihood of it will happen. And uh, even preachers in their sermons and and every day uh, prayers, it was their call, and they are continuing to call on the people to please go back and uh, maybe uh, seek God's intervention. And uh, even yesterday, there was a, a stakeholders meeting with the Kano State Governor, where Kano State Governor used the opportunity to call on the stakeholders, uh, the all those people that matter in. Thank you very much, Aminu okay. Umar. And of course, the PPRO in Kano State confirming, if I got that correctly, that 118 suspects are already in police net and of course arms uh, recovered. Okay, just to let you know again that this news is also being broadcast on terrestrial. We are back on terrestrial and not only on international and NTA News 24. Okay, we now go over us once again, Hingino will be telling us more on the protests in that area. Hello, Hingino. Thank you, Ogo Chukuka. It was a peaceful protest in Lagos as protesters gathered at the designated area to demonstrate. Correspondent reports that there is heavy presence of security to maintain law and order. Freedom Park in Ojota is the designated place for the protests in Lagos. And these Nigerians are gathered here. The atmosphere at Lekki Toll Gate is calm and peaceful with security personnel on ground to ensure law and order as well as a peace water cannon strategically positioned. Though a short drama ensued when about 30 protesters 
gathered at the toll gate, which is not a designated point for the protest, but were dispersed by the security. Lagos generally is peaceful, with the roads devoid of the usual traffic. Shops and private offices are under lock and key. For now, business activities have started kicking up in Lagos. And the Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Adegoke Fayoade, is calling on residents to come out and go about their daily business activities as the force has put in place watertight security that guarantees safety. Diana Ajale reports. Learning from past experience is key. Patrol and surveillance mechanism instituted by the police in Lagos. Apart from increasing visibility at flashpoints and notorious outlets, the police is monitoring development within Lagos metropolis so as to nip possible threats in the board. These measures and many others, the commissioner says, are enough to give assurance of a secured space while appealing to law abiding citizens to go about their normal activities. The whole area is adequately covered so they can come out and do their normal business. I know. They, they are apprehensive of coming out because of the NSAS 2020 issue. But this one is not NSAS. We are on ground and we are assuring them that once they come out, nothing will happen to them. Commissioner of Police, while giving updates on the protest, said the air wing of the agency has been activated to provide 100% coverage while monitoring the situation within the metropolis. He also provided an update on the discovery of explosive device at Ikeja area of the state on Wednesday night. One, one of our officers came and saw the IED and he professionally detonated it before it causes any damage to the you know, suspecting members of the public. So we have taken care of that and we have put measures in place to avert such situation again. Our bomb disposal units have taking proper positions and they are moving and watching to, to avert, to prevent such occurrence. The commissioner says with the level of security instituted, more commercial activities will pick up in the coming days. In Lagos, Diana Ajale, NTA News. That's it from Lagos. Nationwide continues after this break in Abuja with Ogochukuka. <laughs> And what's the situation in Ibadan? We will now join Lukman Hassan for a fillers and updates from that zone. Hello, Lukman, it's over to you. What's happening there? Um, youth in Oyo's uh, Ibadan, the Oyo state capital. Today we are not left out of uh, the nationwide protest. But one interesting and, uh, thing about the protest here in Ibadan is the youth we are able to conduct themselves in a peaceful atmosphere. And even the youth, what uh, most people were expecting is they, they were the ones that were controlling those people that wanted to infiltrate uh, the protest here in Ibadan. And they were also escorted by security men right from the beginning of the protest, which, was, which began uh, in Iwo Road. So, wh what uh, this, this is, Go ahead, go ahead, we can hear you. Oh, this, the protest began and it was just peaceful. Uh, most of the people that joined the, uh, the protest uh, moved in the peaceful atmosphere. There was no crisis. And uh, you were not, uh, those people that wanted to attack the protest were not allowed to attack uh, the protest. All right, thank you very much. Uh, that's indeed oh, a very cherry the, news there. That's a very cherry news there. No hijacking of the process. Thank you, Lukman. And we go now to Yenogua, where the ambience has been peaceful, even as some residents took to the streets to register their displeasure over the unpleasant economic situation. We now join Doris Akumoye for details. Is the popular tombi around about here in Yenogua, the Bayosa state capital? The people are going about their lawful duties. Peacefully, it's been peaceful in Yenegua. The ambience in Yenegua is peaceful. There are skeletal vehicular movements and uh, there has been no trouble at all. For these Nigerians, protests 
that's not the way to go as they disassociate themselves from the protests heading to their workplaces. Here comes those who feel otherwise, demonstrating their displeasure on the streets of Genegua on the current economic situation, which is biting hard in the lives of the common man. They, however, call on governments to intervene and reduce the suffering of the people. Meanwhile, business operators and markets have shut down the operation for fear of the unknown, despite the state government directive for people to go about the businesses. In Yenegoa, Doris Akomonye, NTA News. Well, still on the protest, uh, Kinsley Amajiri is also in Port Harcourt to give us uh, what's happening there at this time. Okay, all right, uh, we now uh, take uh, uh, a Bono State, uh, just uh, the Bono State government uh, imposing curfew in that. Is that report ready? Okay, uh, business activities at low ebb this Thursday with most major shops and markets closed. Mopland Dakok reports that some business owners, however, we are seen around their premises expressing concerns about their losses as a result of the protest. The nationwide protests, which are supposed to address socio-economic hardship in the country, are, however, grounding economic activities here at Wuse Market, where very few traders and motorists are sighted. We are here with Hamza at Wuse Market, where he laments the fact that he has to close his shop due to the ongoing protest. We have to few people that are protesting to come and tips our property. That's why we didn't open shops. I sell pure water in these markets to feed my family, but now I have to go back home empty. But this, this place is uh, the only place we have means of living, live, life lived. So if they close it, uh, close it like two or three, it should not be good for us. So it's unfortunate that uh, I don't know I'm going to reach that extent which we cannot open shop and do our business, protests will still go on, they will complain the leases as a Nigerian citizens. But I do I'm saying the thing is affecting poor people like us. At this shopping complex, market activities are also very low, with only a pocket of traders sitting and waiting for customers who may never show up. Because of the fear of uh, the protest, the traders are not available. They, nobody is uh, ready to come out and that is why you can see that uh, most of the shops are closed. Nobody told them not to open. Yeah, we lose something like uh, anything less than 200,000. It is hoped that before the end of the day activities pick up and return back to normal. From we say Abuja, Muplang, Dakok, NTA News. Thank you, Muplan. Uh, we just hope our uh, uh, activities return to normal in the next uh, few hours. All right, we'll now be going to Chegono Aro, who is in Enugu, and she has an update from that state. Hello, Chegono. You can, you can hear me. Good afternoon go ahead. and welcome. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us in Enugu. Activities okay, tell us, really tell us the situation. To normal in Enugu. This is ESBS Junction, a very busy junction. And there are buses loading to different parts of Enugu. Activities are ongoing, shops have opened, and people have started moving about. Vehicles are everywhere. There's vehicular, heavy vehicular movement around this junction and this junction really links all parts of Enugu. From here you go to Ababa, from here you go to Holy Ghost, from here you go to Guaji, from here you go to the, the New Artisan, the Colas Bridge. Everybody is out. Everybody is out. In fact, uh, life is back to normal. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Gono. And uh, of course, uh, Diba Bari is in Port Harcourt to give us more stories on the protest from that area, too. Hello, Diba Bari. It's over to you. 
Takot, River State Governor Simla Laie Fubara has urged civil society organizations, student unions, and youth groups in River State not to give saboteurs the opportunity to carry out their nefarious activities in the state, urging service commanders to ensure lives and property are protected. Osnachi Samo reports. Governor Siminelai Fubara, in a meeting with service commanders, civil society groups, students and other critical stakeholders, have urged youths of Nigeria to please shelve the protests in River State, considering the political instability in the state, as some hoodlums who do not have the interest of River State at heart may hijack the process. He reminded them that his administration is doing everything within its powers to meet the yearnings of the people. You're already aware of the political situation of our states, where people are looking for every avenue to destabilize the states. We don't need to give them that opportunity to carry out that act. I'm aware of the people that have been hired to come into this state to cause mayhem. If anything happens here, we're going to be the greatest losers. The governor also assured them that the Moribon River State Scholarship Board will commence soon to address the issues of bursary, scholarships, and other entitlements. We really need to cover nuclear science, physics, all those areas, special areas in terms of uh, medicine, those are these aspects of scholarship that I'm looking at. Some members of the youth groups, while acknowledging the efforts of the state government in addressing some of the challenges, urge the federal government to address issues raised by Nigerians. In Port Harcourt, Osinachi Samuel, NTA News. And still on security, the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps says it is poised to protect lives and properties during the August 1st to 10th, 2024 nationwide protest. This comes as the Corps in, the, in River State advised its personnel against any unprofessional conduct in the course of the nationwide assignment. Kingsley Amadji reports. The NSCDC has mobilized its personnel to ensure there is no breakdown of law and order why the protest last. You are trained in martial arts and you know how to go about securing yourself from others that do not have the privilege of the available training you have received. Don't allow anybody to tempt you and push you to the extent that you begin to retaliate unprofessionally. State Commandant of the Corps, by addressing officers and men of the command, challenged them to remain professional, stressing that the command is determined to ensuring that hoodlums do not take advantage of the protest to commit crime. We will not allow hoodlums to hijack this protest. That is the reason why we are here. It is our duty to protect the protesters from these hoodlums or criminals that may want to disrupt the peaceful protest so that it dives into a, a violent protest to achieve their negative whims and caprices. On the strength of this, I urge you to go about professionally to protect the critical national assets. The NSCDC warned its men not to use live bullets in the course of this assignment in Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajiri, NTA News. And that does it from Port Harcourt. It's back to Ogochukuka for the rest of the news. Good evening. Thank you very much, Edith Barbary. And uh, of course, uh, that's uh, where we draw the curtain today on Nationwide. But remember, the special uh, package of uh, the program on the end uh, bad governance uh, protest will continue shortly. <laughs>